I just say it. Welcome to Down on Fire right here on High TV Luxury Channel. We are starting shows off with a new look and I'm super happy because it's the season and we have new people on board, lots to celebrate. All right, today on the show we are checking out Java Lounge. I'm sure we have all had a nice warm cup of coffee here. But this time around, I have the man behind the brand itself uh, who is an IT genius in creating many avenues that have been quite pioneering, pioneering for Sri Lanka. I'm happy to have Bullet. Hi, Bowen. Hi, <laughs> How are you doing? Pretty good. Now, I remember when I spoke to you last time, I asked you this very uh, stereotypical question. Would you consider yourself a nerd? Uh, totally. <laughs> yes, born nerd. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of people say oh, being a nerd is not so cool. But look at Chucky from Rugrats. He grew up to be Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go. Yeah. There's always this theory in my mind. Don't ever underestimate a nerd. When you were in school, how was it? Because I'm sure you would have been very studious with what you what you had to do. But anything that needed a lot of, uh, what can I say, being an extrovert might have been a hard process. It was always, I, I had to work hard on it to even to, even if I knew an answer for a question. You know, to for raise to your hand the, and Raise your it. hand was very hard for me. Yeah. And, and but yeah, so but it has always been a struggle, and I can't really, really believe how far I have come from being that introvert. I'm still an introvert. Yeah. To be able to you know comfortably talk to you. That you is know, true. In an event like this. So but this was this was a mentally made decision that you will switch to be a more extrovert person. You will put yourself out there. Yeah. You had to condition your mind for it. Yeah, I did. Then I think uh, building uh, brands like Kapruka forced me to do that. Mm. And what once I got good at it, now I can talk to a thousand people and like you know, yeah. feel nothing about it. So because it's pointless creating a brand if you can't sell the brand or be the ambassador to the brand. Yeah, yeah. But but there are some brands you don't need an ambassador. But I think Kapruka is a brand that like Odell, like you know, yeah. you know there is a person always Correct. connected to it. Right? So and also Kapruka, I think was as, was a founding brand at that time for this new way of purchasing, new yeah. way of creating. Yeah. It's the first e-commerce brand actually yeah. in Sri Lanka. Like, uh, and a lot of people found it, ooh, who stay away from it because you know, this whole online purchase, buying things mm. without even going to the store was just very new to us. Right. Um, but when you thought, okay, let's introduce Sri Lankans to this, what was your, what was your, what would you say was your biggest challenge? Biggest challenge was that almost all of those customers were first time customers. So imagine, you know, them pulling out that credit card out of the wallet, mm. typing that number in, thinking, oh, what is Kapruka at I'm that going time? to so and get scammed. I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> they didn't even know, like, oh, is it a debit card? You know, but all that, uh, because back then, they, the Kapruka didn't have the brand, mm. right? So it was like, a, mm, what is this website? Yeah. But now it has the brand, it's much more easier to convert. You're more yeah. comfortable typing it in there. Now that, you know, getting them to come into the shop and get out and check out was the, the hardest, the hardest part. part. Yes. You and could get them to the doorstep, but to do the rest of the journey was a hard yeah. part. They'll come and take a sort of surf the net and be like, oh, they have cakes as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go yeah. and buy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those. Right. And also like, you know, checking, is, is it tasty? We don't know. No? Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of questions used to pile up. But mm. to take this risk here, I'm sure your, your brains and your knowledge and your understanding of this modern way of branding could have been so utilized in other countries. What made you sort of stay back here? Right, so, you know, Daru, it was the industry that I believed in. It's not like I invented e-commerce or anything like that, right? Correct. So, it was like an automobile industry, like healthcare industry, etc. Uh, this was an industry that started in the US, in mm. the West, and it was, for me, it was a no-brainer 
that is going to be part of the rest of the world. In every country, this is going to be yeah. there. Uh, just like there was an airport one day, and now every country has an airport. Mm. Right? So like that, so I believed in the industry, and so I bought the industry into Sri Lanka and believed in industry. That's what I'm still doing. So e-commerce is only like, you know, the technical piece of it, but it's actually an industry. Yeah. And when you were trying to introduce this industry, did people say, don't waste your money on this? Sri Lanka is not ready actually, for it. Actually, back then, nobody knew enough to even say, say no, no <laughs> say don't. Like, it's like totally a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, imagine like when Uber came in here, it was yeah. a shock to even all of us. It was like Uber Eats also. Yeah. And did we know enough to say, what are you guys doing? Nobody's going to use this. We yeah. didn't know it even. It took you right. by storm. Yeah. So, but right now, you, it's hard to imagine a life where you can, when it's raining, that you yeah, can just stay. Yeah, it's just a normal thing. Um, looking at where e commerce or even this um, world of IT is moving to Sri Lanka, uh, I know IT companies earn in millions. I think they are mm. one of the most steadily focused industries today. Mm. Even during the whole COVID crisis, Aragalia crisis, mm. all of those, they have stood still and their budgets are big. <laughs> um, right. What would you say about Sri Lanka standing in the IT knowledge and where we are placed in the world? Oh, I think we have, I mean, if you take the size of Sri Lanka, and just 22 million people and our, our production output of the universities, I think that is after tourism and a few couple of other things, IT is our thing. Mm. Right? And just like, you know, how did India really make it? It was That's more than all the other things, it's actually the IT industry. So we are known to be, I know, small made people with math skills and, you know, uh, they're good at maths. They say to any Indian, you know, you just give a, give them hard work, they'll say, oh, no way, but if mm. you give them your taxes, they do it <laughs> so fast. So fast. So yeah. that's the kind of skill we also have. So Small made, math, brilliance. I don't have both. <laughs> Not small <laughs> made or brilliant in maths. It's such a sad plight for me. I belong to some other space. Definitely. <laughs> anyway, we need to get into a break. We are going to indulge in some Java food. Uh, there are many locations I need to speak about some of his uh, interesting projects, even in terms of Java. When you do come back, do stick around this double time. Back to the show, this is Dano on Fire and we are sort of invading the space at uh, Java Lounge here. Um, you know the season always brings a lot of joy and if you want to have a nice warm hot ch chocolate, come sit in a corner, enjoy a nice hot chocolate, it's always really nice. Now this restaurant business is a hard task to be in. Mm. It's not easy because one staff, number two, sustaining quality, number three, making sure that things stay the same way. These are common problems for restaurants to just shrink and disappear. Yeah. But this brand Java has gone beyond Java Road and <laughs> Java, to, Java the Road and come to all these other places as well. Tell me how did you sustain it? So I think the most important thing is we, we, we did one thing right. We did the coffee right. Right. I think what happens for most uh, coffee shops is they turn into restaurants mm. later on. They forget sometimes the core. They forget the core because even we I remember people coming at the early days and saying, <laughs> right? like, why don't you have rice? Like, mm. uh, so it was very tempting for us to uh, actually introduce rice. Yeah, because it's... It's like it's, people are asking yeah. for it, right? So there's a demand. But so then I, had to, I had to discipline and say, mm. no rice. Coffee shop is coffee shop. So we got that core right. Mm. And the second thing is that it, 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 we, the, we are inviting entrepreneurs, you know, people like you, people like them to come and brainstorm and that whole coffee culture is what it embraced on. Mm. When you got that DNA right, it started to work automatically. The rest on of an it. easier platform. Yeah. But telling the honest, a lot of people don't know Sri Lanka was actually a coffee island before it became a tea island. Yes, um, that's right. And coffee is coming back and we actually grew some of the best coffee until this Poos thing came and ate everything <laughs> in the 18 or oh, like before when the British brought it in the tea. So we, it's in our DNA. Actually, I think I'm a coffee lover. I'm not a big tea person. Yeah. Uh, so are you a tea person? No, no definitely Can't not. When you yeah. have I don't think there will be a cup of today if not for this coffee. All those lo long nights. Long uh, nights. Thanks to. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes when kids are growing up today, why I'm asking you this is when you're not in that in that normal square 
that our education system or our parents or our relatives, society, environment wants us to be. We are either frowned upon or we are kept aside or we are even told, get your act together. Mm. You know, why aren't you like doing what you're supposed to do? Mm. You would have been the outcast in certain conversations, not falling into the norm. But then you grew out of it and you showed, this is what my journey was. What would you tell those parents who may have those doubts or even kids who may see this and wonder, oh, I can relate to him better? Yeah, I think, you know, if, if my mom at the end of the day asked me when I was a kid, are you happy? Mm. That question. Are you happy? If I would jump up and say, yeah, I love my day. That means I have done what I love doing, Correct. enjoyed it. I think that's a question any parent should be concerned Asking. about because you are trying to get this guy to go this way when he can only walk that way. Mm. So you're forcing him to do something else. So I think uh, the happiness, is, you know, I was a very happy kid because mm. I was introvert, all that stuff, but I loved what I kept doing. It could that be collecting true. stamps, it could be, you know, yeah. building circuits, whatever it is. And not pushing you on stage to be the next Shakespeare yeah, yeah, exactly. acting. Exactly, yeah. You, you, why can't you talk in English? I mean, go and take more elocution classes. Yeah. You know, if that happens, I'm not going to be happy at the end Correct. of the day. Yeah, actually living through your kids, your dr living your dreams through your kids can be annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point, yes. Yeah. A lot of us do that. So, uh, in, your, in your time of uh, confusion, trying to, you know, find a footing for you in this world of business, leaving, a, leaving an impression that's going to stay forever, what was your biggest challenge when you took these bold moves? The biggest challenge was there was this day that I had to decide, mm. am I going to relocate to Sri Lanka? I was based out of the US when I started Kaprupa mm. and I started to see this grow. But now was the time that I had to pack my suitcase, give up the green cards, all that dreams. I, I was doing a great job at Microsoft, a software engineer, big salary, all that, and decide, okay, I'm going to believe in Sri Lanka and actually move here. That was a very tough one. And because there was no way back. That is no, true. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, trying to relocate to move the moon mm. and yeah, it's almost no way back. So it was, that was a tough story. That is, um, when I was in the US, I actually got a chance to go into the Google office ah. and I couldn't find white skin. I only All found brown skin. Including the, the, chair, the CEO yes. himself. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it feels like San Francisco has become a brown nation of its own and it's remarkable. But taking that call at that time, I'm sure a lot, lot of people would have, your mind would have been in two places taking that decision. Uh, have you ever had a moment where you regretted it? No, not 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 at all now. But there were scary times when you know, like, ah, uh, yeah, this is not going fast enough, and mm. things like that. It it did do that. But uh, I don't think I would have ever stayed there and became an entrepreneur mm. if I started a kapruka there. I don't think I, I I have that skill to do a Silicon Valley company, honestly. But true. I could do a Silicon Valley type of company in a yeah. small pond like Sri Lanka. That's true. So. That is true. Um, I'm sure a lot of people must be reaching out to you, youngsters mm -hmm. who are inspired in some way or the other. Um, what do you tell them, like, especially kids who are out of Colombo, who are limited to resources, but their drive and their urge is so much? I think, you know, if everywhere I go and talk, my, my biggest goal is, of, there's 100 people listening to me, if I can turn one out of this 100 into an entrepreneur, that would be the, the project. So even your audience today, why I'm actually spending the time talking and doing all this is actually I hope the audience, some people will turn into entrepreneurs. So there are three types of them. There are people who with not many ideas, mm. they're okay with regular life. And there are people who are sitting on ideas, uh, but they don't execute. For some reason, they're good procrastinators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all okay. of us are on me <laughs> with the other one. And then there are other guys who has the idea, who has gone done it, they don't need any help. That is true. So I am more focused on the guys who are sitting on the idea and not, not, actually. Actually, not actually doing it. They are the ones who just needed that little bit of a boost. And I tell them, dream big. Mm. Right? Even if you are a three-wheel owner, don't dream about paying off the lease. Right? Dream about having ten three-wheelers. Under your name. Under your name. You might end up at least getting three then. Mm. Because you aim for ten. So, I mean, I have big dreams. I still have a lot of big dreams for, for Kaproka and all the other things that I do. Because yeah. of those, I keep going up. So, dream big. Uh, because it's very hard to motivate a person individually. It's like the idea we just discussed on WTF, yeah. right? 
So it's like I, I, I wanted you to dream big. Yeah, so. true. <laughs> that is true. It's always nice. I always say dreams are the cheapest things that you can ever have. The only thing that you might miss out of it is just a few hours of a uh, few minutes of activity of the day. Mm. But dreaming is cheap. Just dream. At least that will drive you somewhere. But that's amazing. Um, we are getting into a break. As you know, there's no butt packets here at Java, but <laughs> they do have such a great, you know, those quick fixes for you to try. We're going to be digging into this. We'll see you right after this. Do stick around. This time in fact. Welcome back to our final segment here on Down on Fire. We're speaking to Dulip. Uh, speaking about the whole e-commerce space and also we're checking out Java Lounge. Uh, my favorite segment, dessert. Uh, but I have to ask you, uh, Sri Lanka is going through, you know, deficits of dollars. It has been a problem for some time now. Uh, but initiatives like this tend to bring in the dollars. Uh, how has it been in the last few years and throughout? So there's a big diaspora that use Kapruka services mm. to send their love back to Sri Lanka from groceries to gifts to all sort of things. Right. And so that actually we generate quite a bit of dollars into the country. And we kind of have created that bridge for these Sri Lankan expats to contribute back to the country by actually buying something in Sri Lanka. Correct. Through and still be connected. That still be connected. Yeah. And the other thing is that we also export Sri Lankan products on Amazon and eBay. Um, in the US, in Canada, and in UK, etc. Right. And so we have become an e distributor for Sri Lankan brands. So, and that is growing at a phenomenal rate. That's amazing. Now, my question in terms of this, this process of e commerce and how this is taking its roots here, what are the strange things that people have asked you to add to the Kapruka list? You mean the products? Yeah. Oh. Like have they asked you, can you add some humans in there? <laughs> Not yet, but we've been asked for a lot about dating um, oh. option. Like and Kapruka, Kapuka. Kapua. Uh -huh. yeah. There was a Kapua.com like long time ago. Yeah, there yeah, was, yeah, there was. It, it was, was a forum. And I used to check out Kapua. Not for me, <laughs> other people. That was for sale sometime. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so um, the, 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 for sure, astrology services. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we do get that. And that there is also demand for to go do some voodoo stuff. Oh, means do the voodoo and then send no, it you across to? Yes, add to cart. Oh, what did you, uh, what did you buy for me? A curse. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked me for the weirdest request. Yeah. So, so these are, okay, are so voodoo. Humans. So if you go to Fiverr.com today, okay. you can pay somebody ten dollars, and he will pray for you every day morning, and you would see like sales count ten thousand sales. So, it's a very interesting industry. I know it's a definitely. I think I'm telling you, anything to do with religion these days seems to be working. I'm just going to start something. I might just take a little corner here and just start doing some kind of worship. You never know; it's going to work. <laughs> but. Um, in terms of these requests that you all have come across, have you all taken customer feedback and added some of the uh, features? That's for sure, like for example, the horoscopes hmm. uh, service has been launched in Kapruka. You can get two people to match their horoscopes on Kapruka. We will actually give them a handwritten note back. These are special for Sri Lankans who are outside the country. That is true. It's Fukhan. much easier for them to do that. Yeah. Nakat balana things like these are very non-traditional e-commerce stuff that we do. That is true. That's amazing. Uh, uh, you know, I can never think of any other countries asking for these except us. <laughs> can you? Can and you baby names, right? Yeah. So yeah. No, really? So, yeah. They, they put in the the time, and we come up with the list, and we send it back to them. So. so. That's amazing. <laughs> so these are like some cool features. Uh, what would you say is your vision to leave back as a legacy that you did? So I want Kapruka to become a unicorn in Sri Lanka, and there are only, even in the whole region, there are no other unicorns. That is when yeah. you get a one billion dollar valuation. Correct. I, you know, I, it's like me telling you about the three wheel guy wanting, you know, wishing for ten. Ten. So it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's like dreaming big. That is true. And if I get that, or at least try getting there, I think the legacy will be big enough to last a long time. Okay. Uh, how is family life? How do you sort of balance that? So I don't balance it actually. I, I be myself and let them balance automatically. 
your balance around me you know yes. that's easier that way <laughs> it's easier that because otherwise i won't be myself yeah that, i think that's a that's a good a good goal but do you do the whole parents teachers meeting all of those yeah i i, I try to do my best my kids are big i mean they're, yeah. they're 18 and 19 okay. uh, so they're all in the uni yeah but right? when so they were young yeah yeah i i mean as much as possible well, yeah. yeah i would say 30% me and the rest is mom uh, right <laughs> yeah it's easy to I have to ask you, this bald look, is it a purposeful attempt? Just trying to be look like Jeff Bezos. No, no way. It's, it's just, it, they say, quit before you get fired, right? So when you start losing hair, you shave quit. your head. Because I'm just looking at your, <laughs> I feel like you can grow a good head of hair. I, I can, but then, I don't know, when I, when I did this, I did this for a, for a reason when my dad had to go to a surgery. Right. He was not willing to do the, the shave his head, and I did it. And so I came and showed him yeah. and said, look, this is pretty sexy, do this. Mm. And he did it. Then after that, I was like, I didn't make it not bad, now I'm going to keep this. So because <laughs> it gives you less hassle to think of a haircut, correct? Definitely one problem solved. There you go. And as I age and even when you get grey hair and all that, I don't, don't have that problem already. I don't have that problem then. So it's sorted <laughs> early. So the other question is, in terms of your wardrobe, do you have a very limited range yeah. of things that you purchase? Yeah, I'm not into clothing at all. I just have a few shirts and jeans and um, I'm not big into that. So do you use the same color palette? Are you like the guy... Yeah, guys? trying to compare me to the Facebook guys? And even, <laughs> even, even the guys who, you know, iPhone and things like that. You know, people, they wear such monotonous type of outfits and, you know, they look very, like, poor. <laughs> but uh, because it, they just say that we don't want to waste time in the morning. I, yeah, it's like one of the least things I worry about when I get dressed. So because I don't, I don't meet many people mm. per day, and so I'm just in a room in front of a computer most of the time. So it doesn't matter. So okay, fine. They say people who work a lot with IT and software development and things like that do face a lot of um, depression in life. Ah. What is your take on that? I haven't gone through that episode uh, yeah, because I, 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 I always enjoyed what I do. But I can imagine, it all depends on the boss they have. Hmm. I think if, that, if you're under tremendous pressure and if you have a real sucky boss, that can easily lead any guy to a depression. Or, yeah, yeah so. true. Even if you're in IT or not. Oh, no, <laughs> exactly. So. That is true. I have had a... I'm a nice boss. Uh, at least one person agree. <laughs> Rest of you all are fired. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Absolutely a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Very and much. actually, we came to your place. So. Uh, on that note, we need to wrap things up. We will see you soon with another episode of Dano on Fire. Till then, you have yourself a wonderful day. It's a wrap. Uh,